Hi everyone, we're back with the last 10 tips for beginners on Google Sheets. So uh, I think you've learned a lot and we have 10 more tips for you that will really help you uh, get your Google Sheet skills to the next level and we're moving to the intermediate level for sure. So tip number 21, how to sort data and you will use sorting all the time. So let's say I have the data here and I actually want this sort these this housing expenses i want to sort it alphabetically so you could select the first cell and then the other one and click data sort sheet but if i clicked on that look what happens you can sort a range containing vertical merge okay so we were talking about the merging so let me unmerge this i'm going to unmerge this and i'm going to select one more time data sort sheet it's basically sorting all these items in this column. So it completely messed all my categories up. So I'm going to undo, we don't want that. But if I select this and I'm going to say data sort range, it will just sort data in this section. But what happened with my data on the right? It's all messed up, right? Because shelter was the highest expenditure, but somehow it's right here much lower. So I know this is a, you have to be careful when you do that. So I'm going to undo. So what you want to do, if you want to just select all the data that's corresponding to your items. And now if I go to data, sort range, I can go advanced sorting option, but I can also just go by column B for now. So now it's sorted correctly, but I can also show you that we can sort in another way. We can actually have a couple of items being sorted. So I'm going to say advanced range sorting options. And here you can specify if your data has header, my doesn't, but I can specify sorted by, let's say I have alphabetical order. And then I can add another criteria. I'm going to add maybe by the size, by the expense. And then you can click sort. And actually it's not going to make a difference this way because we don't have for the first criteria more than two items. So, but uh, let me show you with the names. You know, if I specify, select these columns, go data, uh, sort range, and I'm going to say um, by column A and by column B, and I'm going to say data has header row, it will sort the information for me this way. Tip number 22, how to split data into columns. So I have this data with name and email and maybe I want to separate the you know the first name from last name and if there's a middle name and I'm going to actually end move like add a column right there left and one more and remember how we should if you select multiple actually I can just move it manually right there so if you select multiple columns then you can right click and insert how many columns you like. So now here, I wanna clean up this data. So the number one thing that you can do if you select this, you can go to data, clean up, and I'm going to trim white space. So the reason why, because some of my data has space before first name in the middle, but some doesn't. So I'm going to click that and it's cleaned up the data. So now I can nicely see that the names are nicely organized this way. But I want to still split the first name, middle name, and last name. So now I can select it one more time. I can drag across, I mean down. And now if I go to data, split text to columns. And now here it's just very small, but you can click on this. It says detect automatically, or if you click on it, it will ask you what kind of item is in between that we should use to split data. In our case, not our case, it's space. And you can also specify custom. If you say it's custom, maybe there's something, you know, like a slash or what have you. But in our case, we're just going to use space. And here you see it's separated data. Now, you still have to clean up some of it because I have some middle initial and some don't have middle initial, but at least, you know, it split the data for me for the first, first part of it. And I can also just grab it and maybe move it here. So then I will have, you know, middle initial for some of them and last name. So it just gets you started, but it quickly, you don't have to manually retype the data.
Tip number 23, how to insert and work with function. And we're just going to very basic because I'm going to have other videos on functions, but let's say I have the data and you, I mean, using Google Sheets and Excel, it's basically for a lot of calculations. So the quick way to calculate things, it's let's say I wanna have a, a function here that takes the number that's monthly and multiplies by 12 to have annual costs. How to make data uh, functions work? You basically click on a cell and you know if it's like i'm just going to delete this information here and if you want to start typing the function you click equal and it will have some suggestions for you it's saying c5 which is columns c row 5 times 12 because it's smart enough yeah it knows that i want to do annual cost so I can actually click on that and be like, good. But then, you know, we have that number 12 manual number and I don't like it. I like to have some, some reference to, because manual numbers can be in formulas can sometimes cause errors and you don't know where it is. Where's the error coming from? So I'm going to put number 12. Okay, let's just maybe decrease the size of this because it's giant and I'm going to italicize and I'm going to go to equal again and i'm going to select the cell that i want to multiply and you can use plus minus for subtraction and star for multiplication in our case or a slash for division but i'm going to use multiplication and i'm going to refer to this cell and now once you're done you click return and this there's the calculation for let's do another one let's do like maybe percentage let's say the percentage of the housing expense how much is the furniture how much are furniture and appliances so if i click here you can also double click on a cell and when it's once it's activated it means it's working there you can find function if you go to um, insert function and here are the different functions that you have and we just want to have you know quick functions but you know, like these are the basic sum, average, count, max, minimum for you. And then you have extra ones listed right there. And I'm going to use equal. Now I'm going to go to, actually, let me just go below. I just returned it and moved my cell below. Equal. Select this number. And I'm going to divide by the total housing expense. And now I have... Um, percentage right there and I'll tell you what happened with the suggestion that just came in another tip but basically this is the calculation that we have and that's the quick way to work with functions quick number 24 how to copy over formula so once you have formula you don't have to retype the formulas everywhere so I have the data here for housing and let's say let's do our formula we get equal and now it's actually suggesting what we want to add and I'm going to say you can select by just clicking enter to to include that or you can just type in and the way to do it like you basically say sum the formula and in parentheses because you have to select which cells you can just grab the cells close the parentheses and click enter now once I have this formula I want to do the same thing for the annual cost but I don't have to retype it you can just take the call uh, the formula click command C and paste it there another quick way also is if you just select the formula you have this like blue square in the bottom right corner you can just and you when you position your cursor of it you have this kind of like a plus sign now and you can just drag it across and if I keep dragging it's, it's going to show me that there is a formula but there's nothing to sum if you want to see where it's summing, if you click in the formula bar, it shows you what you're summing. So if I click here and I click in the formula bar, it shows me what it's summing. So that's the quick way to work with formulas, copying it over. Now I can also copy this formula to another row. So I can actually select these two rows uh, or columns and click Command C and paste the formula here. However, you want to make sure that it's referencing the correct information. So if I click on the formula and go to the formula bar, look at this. It's actually missing two items from my transportation. So I would have to actually, if you click in the formula, you select it, 
and you can specify what you want actually let me just do this and now i can select drag that i want to make a correction that from transportation it's actually using how many here i have seven rows for housing it was using only five rows so you want to make sure that the formula is still referencing the correct thing so you see i made the adjustment and the numbers changed tip number 25 the difference between relative and absolute reference in google sheets and it's kind of the same as excel and that's a big one so let's say i'm going to uh, figure out percentage here of how much each of the subcategory is um, of the total cost so for the housing the total cost is 21,000 and I want to see each of these subcategories how much is it in a percentage so I'm just going to go to the first one and type in the formula by taking this number dividing by the total and this is like out of suggestions basically of the calculation and this does not make sense so i'm just going to undo so i'm going to select this formula and i'm going to just manually copy command c and copy across here and now i know that this should be 100 percent what are these numbers what is happening if you click on the formula right here this is taking the annual cost for the subcategory for household operations and dividing by transportation category and then if you keep going and if you go this one this one is also taking it so what is happening it's using relative reference so whenever you have a formula if you have right here just the column and row but there's no dollar signs meaning saying take the cell to the left divided by cell one two three four five six cell down and when you copy that formula it's doing the same thing taking one cell to the left six down but we want to take one cell to the left and then actually just always refer to this row and cell just this number so we don't want to keep going down so the way to fix it you have to use absolute references so the way to fix it is for my d10 which is the total housing cost i need to add dollar sign to the column and to the row and absolute reference sometimes you might have to um, add the dollar sign just to the column or just to the row depending on your situation but once i add this and now if i'm going to drag the formula now it makes sense because these add up to 100 which they should and this number divided by itself it's a hundred so that's the difference between absolute and relative references Tip number 26, how to reference formula with data from another sheet or another tab. So if you have this and the data is on the same, you know, tab information, it's an easy reference. But let's say if I want to calculate this with data from another sheet, I just select my first data point times and now I can go to the tab where's my other data and here I have let's say months I select this and press enter and now the calculation is referring to sheet 3 it says the name of the sheet and if I change the name say it's months here you will go back to your data and you can see to your formula I'm sorry and you can see that it's updated the name it's referring to the month month tab and now d4 so if i go to month tab d4 this is where the data is coming from so this is a, a way to basically keep data across different tabs and be able to reuse them in your formulas tip number 27 how to quickly check some average count of items from your sheet so i have a sheet here and maybe i'm interested in finding out you know the total annual healthcare costs plus um, maybe the transportation costs and education costs and if i select these cells you know i would have to make a formula but then maybe i i want to check different data a quick way to find the sum average and count of data is if you go to the bottom right you see this minimum uh, information and you can specify what's the default so i'm going to say the default will be sum and but it shows me also the average of the three items i selected the minimum the maximum how many i'm calculating 
and if you you know how many numbers I have there and I can select another data maybe I want to specify this information how much uh, how much is this and if I uh, see the bottom right corner I see the sum right there and I can also see the average minimum and maximum so it's a quick way if you have certain numbers that you want to add up quickly you select the number then um, you s click command and select any other numbers you like and then you can quickly tell you know how much is the the sum of it average minimum maximum count tip number 28 oh wow we almost at the end so how to use the explore button and so i'll show you a quick way of especially if you're new to data analysis and so on how you can get some suggestions what you can do with the information you have in your google sheet so let's say i'm going to um, select this information and then if you go to the bottom right and click explore it will open up these options and this will tell you like hmm these are the things you can do with this data you can actually change the formatting of your data you could um, change the formatting um, let's say and then maybe maybe you want to analyze it by using this graph and I could click on a graph and you will do a graph for me a very quick one so it doesn't mean you know it's very helpful because it doesn't have any labels but it just gives you these suggestions that you can use to kind of see what what's going on in your data very quickly and um, you know maybe the pie or it's kind of showing you different percentages of things you can just add more labels and so on but this is a quick way to basically get some suggestions of what your data what kind of information is provided with your data and you can do different things maximum column like you can you can just you know suggest other things so it's a quick way to get some suggestions of what to do with your data and what kind of information you have in your data tip number 29 how to use autofill and suggested autofill so let's say i have the names here and maybe i want to number them so i'm going to insert a column to the left and just add a number here and i don't have to do one two three just keep going what's easy enough if you have if i just use one number and i try to drag it like if i click on that square in the bottom right it will just put one everywhere but if you have several numbers then google sheets is smart enough to detect what's going on that you've been increasing it by one and now if i drag it it will add the numbers the autofill for for you we can do something like that with let's say monday and if i select this these two and try to drag it it will fill out you understand that these are days of the week and we pre-fill it for you so you don't have to retype it now let's go back to our expense and i want to show you what you briefly saw in uh, one of the tips so when we were doing the calculations here taking this and dividing by the um, absolute reference in our case for absolute reference if i click enter this is a suggested autofill it's saying we suggest this calculation if you agree with this you can just click ok and it will actually do the calculation for you and you know in our case it's it's correct up to this point and then it's wrong because it keeps referring to the absolute reference but in other cases it might be right so i'm going to remove from this section but for these numbers it worked fine so this is like a quick way of the google sheets basically working and figuring out what you want to do we are at tip number 30 which is how to download and export a copy of your worksheet so you worked very hard in your google sheets and now maybe you want to download a copy or save a copy if you go to file you can um, click make a copy if you click on that you can change a name and say test for us and you can click my drive which will save it to your google drive you can click it on your computer and specify where you can also share it with others and um, you can click make a copy i'm not going to do that but that's the option you can also go to file and download and now you can actually download it as microsoft excel so let's say if someone has microsoft excel and they want a microsoft excel format this is the way to do it you can also do a pdf 
uh, file of your saved one and CSV. So there are other options and we will go over some of the like web page and other options that are available here. But this is a quick way to basically export your file. And you know, you also, if you want to print it, you can click print and you can print it here and you would uh, specify what you want to print it. You can click next and basically it will print to your local printer or you can also save as PDF there as well. So thanks so much for watching. I think you definitely graduated to intermediate Google Sheet user.